Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are taking a look today at a little satellite truck for your pocket. This is the Teradec Video, and it's uh, got a clever spelling here. Uh, and what this little guy does is take HDMI video and output it over your Ethernet or your Wi-Fi that you can then stream to YouTube, Livestream, or Ustream, or basically any RTMP compatible streaming service. I'm going to show you in a minute how to do that with YouTube, but before we do, we need to look at the hardware first. So we'll look at all sides. There's a lot to look at. Uh, there's a power switch here, which will turn the device off and on. It takes a little bit of time for it to boot up, um, but once it's up, it stays up. Uh, this is a USB port, and you use this to plug in a 3G or 4G modem if you're out in the field. Um, I should add that there's also a battery on board that they say will uh, stream for about an hour or so. So if you're out in the field, you might want to have a secondary power source just to be safe because undoubtedly you're going to have the thing on longer uh, than you'll be shooting for but you know you could go past the hour on that but uh, that will plug in right there. I do have a Novatel MiFi uh, LTE hotspot from Verizon uh, that did not work uh, with this at least didn't work over USB. I could connect to it uh, via the Wi-Fi that's built in but um, it did not work via USB so I'm sure they'll improve compatibility uh, with those MiFi's later for the USB option, but uh, you do have the Wi-Fi uh, option in the interim. Uh, there's a jack here that you can monitor audio out with, which I find really helpful. So there's one less thing I have to carry with me. I have a little uh, HDMI pass-through that I don't need anymore because I have that little jack there. Um, on the front is a OLED display, and I'll show you what is on here in a second. Um, we have a uh, blue light here indicating that it's receiving video, and it's getting that video from uh, my ATEM switcher that's hooked up over there. And we have uh, H.264 compression working, so uh, we have a good signal, and it's also telling me that it's communicated with YouTube, and it's ready to transmit whenever we are ready to do so, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, when it is transmitting, you'll see the little cloud light up here, and if we have any issues like network congestion problems or anything, that uh, will light as well. There's a start and stop button here to start and stop the stream. You can also set it to start automatically. And then there's a menu button where you can step through and see a whole bunch of stuff. And all of these settings can be configured from uh, a web browser or from an iPhone or Android app. So we're going to do most of that on the web browser. So I'll skip a lot of these settings just because it takes a while to get it set up. And typing in some of the manual settings for YouTube will be a real uh, pain on this thing, so we're not going to do that. But typically what I like to do is go in and just get the IP address of uh, the device so that I can see if uh, I, you know, I can connect to it <laughs> over, the, uh, over the network. So um, there is what I have for an IP. Uh, but you could also go in and really set all the video settings and get everything uh, configured there as well. So it has the option for that. Um, it's telling me what it is inputting at. So I'm getting uh, a video at uh, H, uh, 1080i, and I just told it to uh, make sure that it's set to widescreen. It will um, de-interlace the video when it broadcasts. So if I set YouTube for 720p or 1080p, and we're going to do 1080p in a second, uh, it will actually go ahead and do that, uh, de-interlace the video on the fly, which is really handy. So uh, we'll see how the rest of that works. Nothing on this side, just some vents probably for all the heat that this thing generates. It's not too much heat, but I'm sure it's a, it's a lot in a small space. I have a lot of stuff hooked up here at the moment, but I can just step through um, what the rest of it is. Uh, there is a uh, power outlet here, so it'll charge the battery when it's off and power the device when it's on. We have our Ethernet, and again, you have Wi-Fi built in as well. Uh, and then you have an audio input should your uh, device not be sending audio over the HDMI. So that is the look at the system. So we're going to um, get out of all this stuff here and start a stream to YouTube. Now, typically when I stream from my basement, I stream using uh, 720p, mainly because it seems to me that's the best balance between bandwidth usage uh, and just overall video quality. And I would stream from uh, Wirecast running on a MacBook Pro. I'd run uh, the video through one of those Thunderbolt adapters from Blackmagic that I reviewed earlier. So uh, that was always the way I would do it. Uh, it works fine on here as well at 720p. In fact, the video quality looks a little bit better than it did with Wirecast. Uh, and the uh, audio was good in sync and everything else. When I went to 1080p, it was a different story. I had one issue where I had really uh, broken up audio. It was kind of like uh, every other word you hear. Uh, another test that I did with a lower audio quality uh, resulted in things running out of sync. So it seems like if you are short on bandwidth, it's going to come at the expense of audio. The video quality remained pretty uh, consistent throughout. It was the audio that suffered. And unfortunately, there's no way to know if that's happening or not unless you're having somebody monitor the feed live. So I would say if you're 10 megabits or under, uh, stick with 720p. But let's take a look at how to configure it. All right, we're going to do a 1080p test on the ATEM right now through the video. 
And the first thing you're going to do is you have to go and set up a live event in YouTube. And if you have access to this, you'll know how to get that started here. So we'll just step through the settings. Uh, this is on the ingestion settings that you'll have once you create the event. I, I like to set it just to basic ingest ingestion here. I usually, like I said, do the 720p because I think it's uh, a little bit more compatible with my network as far as the speed I have upstream. Um, the next thing you want to do is make sure that you're on other encoders. And right now, um, the video will automatically work with uh, Livestream and Ustream, but it doesn't automatically work with YouTube. So you just have to go to the other encoders here and get uh, these three pieces of information. I found these last two, the server URLs, don't change all that often. At least they haven't changed at all today. Um, but the stream name will change every time you do a live stream. So I'm going to grab uh, this one right here. And the next thing we're going to do is actually pop over to our settings for the video, which is a uh, the web, little web server that it has built into it. So we are logged into it at the moment. And we're going to step through just a couple of things in the broadcast window here. And you could do this from the front control panel, but I don't recommend it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to platform. And I have it set to manual. So if I had Ustream or Livestream, it would connect up with those services and automatically give me uh, which stream I want to connect to. But we don't have that available yet with YouTube Live. And I'm going to replace this old stream, just paste in the new one. And that is it. You can set up auto reconnect and auto start if you wanted to. But sometimes I like to be a little bit more uh, careful in how I start things off there. So we'll do that. Um, there's also a quality setting down here. I set it to manual this time just because I want to mess around a little bit with the audio bit rate. Maybe turn it down to 192 so it's not as um, high quality. You could just do a basic setting and that would uh, kind of give you the best quality settings for each setting here. So full HD is 1080p, HD is 720p. Uh, you can hit uh, suggest quality also and it'll give you uh, it'll do a little bandwidth test and determine which one is best for you. In my environment here, it says that uh, HD and not full HD is the best. So uh, this might be why, you know, why the audio problems we had occurred. So uh, we'll just keep that audio uh, codec down to 192 as a bit rate and see if maybe that uh, might fix it. Uh, we'll leave the adaptive bit rate on as well. And we'll just hit save here. And what it's going to do is uh, reboot the encoder on the device. So what you'll see here, let me switch over to our desk shot here, you'll see that the encoder is going to go down for a second. It'll, it, right now it says ready, um, but it's going, to, uh, ha it's going to cycle basically after the settings take effect. And it takes, it's funny, sometimes it goes right away and sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Right now it seems to be uh, taking a little bit longer. Um, there it goes. And now it's going to reboot the encoder. So it says not ready. And what will happen is once it rejiggers itself, it will uh, reconnect to YouTube and we'll continue our, our broadcast process here. So we just have to wait for it to become ready. What I found sometimes is that it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that uh, thing to redo itself and, and get ready. Other times it goes by really quickly. So um, it might just be you know, a combination of YouTube and uh, the video getting itself put together. So we'll just wait a second here. All right, we are ready now. So what we're going to do is go over to our live control room on YouTube. And now you'll notice here that we're not receiving, it says a little red light up here. It says we're not receiving data from your encoder. And the reason is, is that we haven't started it yet. So we're going to turn on our encoder here. I'm just going to pop the little box up here. I'm going to hit the start button. It takes uh, a little bit. It blinks at you. It doesn't really give you any other indication that it's starting. So push it once, see it blink, and you'll know that it's working. Uh, now we are live, as you can see right here in the corner, it says live. And now what should happen in just a second is our YouTube page here should change, which it did. I'm just going to pop off. The, actually, I'll leave this on so you can see the little blue light start up here. So basically what's happening now is that we are on the cloud. It's delivering video to YouTube. However, YouTube hasn't started yet. So we're going to hit preview. And this is the process you have to go through. You have to start with preview, uh, wait for that to uh, get up and running. But you'll get an indication here that uh, we have a good 1080p stream and the health is good. All right, after a little bit of consternation, we are up and streaming. And you can see here the, uh, the stream status is good, although I think we're going to have the same audio problems that we had before. I'm going to put a link to this stream below so you can check that out. Um, so overall, I think this is a pretty good device. I mean, it, it, is a, it is a satellite truck that fits in your hand or in your pocket. Um, it delivers uh, really decent performance, provided your bandwidth is there. And I think that's the key thing, is making sure that uh, you have enough bandwidth. Budget-wise, it's not inexpensive. It's $700, but you know, if you were looking for a live streaming solution and, and perhaps you know, thinking about buying another computer for that task, uh, this is certainly a much better deal in that you get an appliance that can just stream and stream only 
uh, and it doesn't have all the overhead that a PC might bring into the into the picture. So, um, so I think you know if you if you have it you know within your budget that $700 makes sense for this activity, uh, then this is a a good investment and it's portable and can uh, be taken around everywhere else with you. So, just want to thank all of you who've been watching and and uh, writing some great comments and some great questions over the last couple of weeks as we've been uh, kind of going through all the things that are in my studio. Uh, all of those views contribute to the budget uh, for this studio. So I really appreciate that. And uh, you know, th this is purchased partly from uh, some of the support you had uh, just from, from viewing the videos and also from some of you who have uh, made the Amazon affiliate purchases also. So I really just want to thank you for that. Uh, if you have questions about this device, please ask. I'm going to do some follow-ups. Um, you know, there isn't a lot of depth to the product. I mean, it, it, you've set up like a couple of of options, hit the button and it, and it starts streaming. But I'd be happy to uh, answer questions, delve a little bit further into different parts and uh, kind of give you some more feedback as I've been experiencing this thing as we go. So that is the TerraDeck Vidu and uh, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.